Hi guys and welcome back to day 19 of Inktober. So today I'm going to talk a bit about ink washes, what I've learned so far, some of the differences between watercolors and ink washes, and just kind of a general what I have experienced and learned so far with this medium. And I will be answering, there have been several questions in the comments that I haven't gotten around to answering, so I'll go ahead and answer some general questions involving that in this video too. So this is going to be just a little bit of me talking a lot about ink washes today. So as always, I do have a list of all of the tools that I use down in the description, but the ink that I have been using for all of my ink washes this time around is a Liquitex ink exclamation point. That's the title, but it's just black and it's an acrylic ink and I mix it with water and I just have to worry about the ratio of ink to water. And it's actually a really freeing to be able to just worry about value and this one metric, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, I have definitely missed color. I'll say that when I'm done with Inktober, I am so excited to get back into it. I have so many ideas that I've gotten while I've been on my color diet, but, but being able to sit down on a piece and not have to do nearly as many color comps to be able to figure it out, I can just go in with the values. And most of the time I'm able to just go in and start painting because I start lighter and then I can build it up to be darker most of the time if I do it right, which means that I can't really go wrong. I can really build up on the piece itself and take it to that final level. But when I'm using color, I have to make sure that it's plotted out very, very strategically. So I have to put a lot more planning in. So in a lot of ways, I found these Inktobers to be very refreshing to work on. So I think working with just the ink wash, it's really, really pleasant. If you haven't tried just working monochromatically, I would definitely recommend it. It just, it frees up a lot of other things you can focus on the things that maybe aren't always focused on like value, which is a key part of a piece working well. So, so yeah, I think this was a very good exercise in me getting back to remembering that values are important, but that's the biggest thing that I think I've been really enjoying as far as ink washes. But I've also noticed that, that I've been working with these ink washes way differently than I ever would have anticipated. So when I work with watercolors, I prefer to get my washes as flat as possible. I either want it to be a completely smooth flat wash or I want it to be a graded wash that blends seamlessly from one color to the next. So it's always frustrating when I get any kind of blemish in the ink wash itself or the, the watercolor wash that is. But uh, when I was starting into these ink washes, it kind of very naturally just started becoming very textured. I let it itself be textured. I, I added more texture. I looked for ways to start bringing it in. And it was really interesting because it is so opposite of how I normally work, but it just felt so so ripe for this application of working in ink washes. And I think that one of the things, one of the reasons is because I've stripped out the color, I don't have as many avenues to use to really push different information, to bring more things to light. So I, uh, I think that it's, it's because I took one thing out, it allowed me to focus on another thing and I've really enjoyed it. I have really pushed the textures that I'm getting with these ink washes. I've also pushed different types of patterns that I can create with them. And I think that that has definitely taught me that there's room in my normal watercolors to explore more textures like this, to look for ways that I can start including more information with the application of it and not just with the colors and the values of the watercolors themselves. So specifically on this piece, what I'm thinking about is uh, when I'm working on her, her bandage dress, I guess, I, instead of just going in with just a value of just blocking it in, which was my first thought. I went in with a bunch of these little, little tick marks or hashes, I guess, that built up a value in the shadows and then tapered off where it got lighter. And because of that, it added more information to the form, to the shape, to what kind of material this is. So it was way more interesting, but it's a kind of thing that I never would have thought of if I wasn't already embracing texture and looking for ways to incorporate that more. 
And I know that part with the dress has not happened yet. I'm a little, I'm a little ahead of myself, but eventually when you see it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, I also did have a question about the tape that I'm using and I do have the tape listed in the description or at least it should be. I'll check to make sure that I got it there this time. But the tape that I am using is called drafters tape or artist tape and it is special. It looks like masking tape, but please don't use masking tape on your paper. It will definitely tear it. The paper or the tape that I use is very low tack. It's intended to be taped to paper and then peeled off. It's it's actually really perfect for that application. And I found that it can it can remove the top layer of paper if you're not careful about it. So I found that the best way for me to peel it off is I peel it off at almost parallel. So I'll start peeling it at let's see let's let me think how to like phrase it because it's such like a mathematical thing I, I pull it back so it's almost flat against itself and then I pull it at an angle away from the paper so that that just I find helps it peel up cleanly whereas if I'm pulling it 90 degrees straight up off of the paper sometimes it tears a little bit more but when I pull it from that angle it actually comes off completely smooth I don't have any marks or anything uh, but also if you do have an issue with your paper being a little bit roughed up from your tape and you're using the correct kind of tape what you can use is you can use your uh, blow dryer or your embossing gun and heat up the tape just a little bit you don't want to go too much so that it melts the glue but if you warm it up a little bit it'll release its hold on the paper and you'll like, be able to peel it up that's actually a technique that i have had to use in the past it's is sometimes i've noticed the tape will stick just a little bit more whether it's that patch of tape or, or the conditions that I put the paper in, I'm not really sure, but sometimes I do have to use that method. But overall, if you're careful, if you peel it at a nice, good angle, it, it shouldn't damage your paper if you're using the right kind of tape. And I've had a lot of questions asking about the differences between ink wash and watercolors. And honestly, I actually haven't really felt that there's been a lot of differences in the application or how I've used it. So if you guys have felt that there have been differences that you've experienced. I'd love to hear about it. I I do think it's interesting because I, I think that there's probably differences. I'm just not paying attention to those differences. The things that I'm looking for, I feel like are relatively consistent, but, but yeah, I'd love to hear what your experience is. If you've used ink wash and watercolor, what, what you've, how you felt, how you've compared them. I think that one thing that I definitely have to pay more attention to with the ink washes is that they go down much much darker than they dry so I absolutely have to take that into account that they always end up a lot lighter with watercolors they have a similar thing but I found that they usually go on much more saturated and then they dry a lot more desaturated and dull so I do have to be aware of how I can build up the the colors when I'm using watercolors but with this I think I have to think a lot more about how I'm going to build up the values a little more and it really does depend on the watercolor pigments themselves, but I found that when I'm using this particular ink and this ink wash, it's a lot more forgiving than I expected. I expected it to be a lot more staining and binding to the paper than it actually is. I have some watercolors that the instant it touches the paper, if, if you make a mistake, if it's marred, if I, I do a bad ink wash and there's a little line in it, there's pretty much no fixing it. It's pretty, it's pretty stained. I can cover it up or I can emphasize it so that it looks more intentional, but it's pretty much stuck there. But this ink wash I've actually found is something that I can go back over areas, especially if it's still wet. That's not something that all watercolors can do. And a lot of watercolors can do this, but I found that if it's still wet, like if I'm doing the the gradient for a background, even though I'm letting it be textured, I want to make sure that the texture is in a strategic way. So it's not focused like right on an edge of something. So it emphasizes where I might have picked up the brush. I want it to look very natural and not draw attention to that kind of a thing. But if I, I do accidentally leave a little bit extra of a texture there, it's really easy to go back in there and bring it back up off the paper a little bit, just scrub at it a bit with the paint, with the paintbrush that is, and then it lifts up and then it settles better. And I, I've just been really happy with that process. I've been super surprised at how many mistakes I've been able to fix that normally have just been there with my watercolors. Actually, I think it, it might be something that I might be a little bit more timid with my watercolors because I'm always told you can't go back, you can't fix them, you let it dry this is in very certain circumstances, but you let it dry and then you can 
paint on top of it. But I found that with these ink washes, it's a lot more forgiving, especially on areas like where I'm painting a paint wash, an ink wash, and I don't quite get it all the way up to the edge or the edge separates in a weird way. I can go back in there even when it's dry sometimes and scrub it in there so that it will fill in that gap and smooth out that line of extra dark ink where it's separated. So yeah, I found it to be surprisingly forgiving and I like that. And that is it for today's piece. I do have the original available as usual, and I have prints of this one as well as all my other Inktobers as well. So if you're waiting for that, I have them available. I also will be making a book of all of my Inktober pieces. So if you'd also like a copy of every single one of them, that will be coming very soon, I promise. I keep saying that, but it is actually gonna happen soon. Uh, and I think that's about it. I do post daily Inktober videos, so I'll be back tomorrow. Don't forget to uh, let me know in the comments what your experience has been so far, especially if you've been using ink wash. I'd love to hear what you've learned from it and what you've enjoyed or disliked. But yeah, that is it for today. So I'll see you guys at my next one.